I'm here to introduce our first speaker for today. After nearly a decade in finance, Michelle Thomas turned her love for content and social media into a more fulfilling career. Michelle has written content for small agencies and major corporations such as Golfsmith and 11 brands for Starwood Hotels. She currently manages all things content and social for Bluehost. Michelle believes that great content starts with strategy and ends with analysis. A Southern girl at heart, Michelle lives and learns in Austin, Texas. Please welcome Michelle Thomas. I have to get used to this, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for coming out today. Uh, how, by a round of hands, how many of you have, uh, is this your first board camp? Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it and this will be a day full of learning. Um, this is a long talk, so I'm going to try to get through it as quick as possible to answer your questions as well. Um, so just really quick uh, intro. Uh-oh, clicker's not working. All right, I'm pushing buttons. Okay, so uh, again, my name is Michelle. I'm the WordPress content manager at Bluehost. Um, I'm from the breakfast taco capital of the world. It's Austin. Do not let anyone tell you it's San Antonio. Um, I am a writer and photographer, and basically I write all the things, mainly about WordPress. Um, so quickly, let's talk about what content is. Uh, I believe content is the number one relationship builder between you and your audience. Um, so good content is uh, inf information, it's experience, and it's engagement, right? Um, all of these slides will be available later, so you don't have to write all the notes or take pictures, but you're welcome to do whatever you like. Okay, so basically, um, the question is, what is good content? So good content is um, concise, it's clear, and it's compelling. Uh, so compelling essentially meaning that it encourages someone to do something, it invo invokes emotion, um, and it, uh, oh, this is, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, concise meaning it's clear, it's um, focused, it is basically not just a bunch of jargon, right? You're speaking to an audience, they understand what you're saying, your grammar, spelling, and punctuation is on point, and they're, excuse me, and there's actually something that they gain from the content. Um, so what was content originally? Uh, before the World Wide Web, content was things like newspapers and billboards and magazines, uh, which are still alive, but they've been forced you know, into a new era. So now content is things like blogs or social media, uh, GIFs are even considered content, video, webinars, um, all these things are different ways to reach an audience. Um, and I think the main thing that I want people to take from this is that you have to be as advanced as content is at all times, right? So if you're still stuck on the newspaper phase and everyone else is, is at the World Wide Web, you're now behind uh, the game. So with all these options to get your message into the world, you generally find yourself asking, how do I know which one to use? My answer to that is always to know your audience, right? And so your audience is, some, is someone who digests your content in some way, uh, shape, or form. And the first way to, e to easily figure out who your audience is is by asking what problem do you solve for them. So we're gonna use an example, uh, wrinkle cream. That's generally something that solves the problem of wrinkles, right? Um, so if you know that that's the problem, you know where to, to find people who use wrinkle cream. Um, so my question is, do you find uh oh, wrong slide. Okay, do you find people who use wrinkle cream on Snapchat? More than likely not. Um, <laughs> they're generally somewhere on Facebook or maybe even YouTube. Um, TV is a great place to, to sell wrinkle cream because an older audience generally uses this product. Uh, something like baby food is a little harder because it targets mothers, but anyone can have to purchase baby food. Um, camping gear is something else where it's, you, it can cross all genders, it can cross all different types of uh, demographics, so understanding your audience is the best way to figure that out. In something like my job, uh, web hosting, anyone can use it from a designer you know, on, uh, that's working in their basement to someone who is running a brick and mortar uh, storefront. So it's a little bit harder to identify an audience and that's where I generally say sometimes personas is a good way to start. Uh, so a persona is essentially a set of criteria that you use to identify an audience. Uh, it can be based on a lot of things like age, profession, interest, um, and so understanding who you're actually speaking to allows you to create content that is then compelling, concise, and clear for that person. Um, I always think of it as content that resonates with someone actually creates that, um, that interest in reading further, right? So 
Dave is a free thinker, he's a travel enthusiast, I'm probably not gonna sell him wrinkle cream, right? Um, Kayla is 45, she's professional, she's meticulous, she may care about things like you know, her skin and the way it's, it's, that she's aging. So understanding those different aspects of your audience will help you to understand how to write for them. So where does your audience hang out on the internet? That's the second question you wanna ask. Um, do they like to watch videos? Do they prefer written content like long form blogs? Um, that's for you to figure out, right? And so there's a lot of different ways to figure these things out. Um, but again, this is where, this, uh, it looks like my slides mixed up, but essentially wrinkle cream, Snapchat, probably not a good idea, right? Um, so one of my favorite controversial speakers is Gary Vaynerchuk, and he likes to say if you're not putting out relevant content content in relevant places, you don't really exist, right? So if you're selling wrinkle cream on Snapchat, you're not getting what you need from your audience, you're not making the sales that you could potentially be making, um, and that's, then you basically don't exist. You're not where your customer is at that time. So um, next you wanna ask yourself, why is there a need, right? There's difference between a need and a want, um, but essentially a need leads to a purchase, right? If I'm saying I want or purchase or some type of engagement. Um, engagement can be a lot of things like a, a like, a share on social media, a comment, um, also a comment on your blog. It could be um, them reading through multiple blogs. They're fully engaged. You can tell these things through tools like Google Analytics. Um, but essentially, a need can be something that entertains you, right? Like, when I wanna laugh, I'm going to go and find a meme that will make me laugh, or a funny puppy video, a, trip, a little puppy that's learning how to walk down the stairs, something like that. Um, so when someone says, you know, they don't blog, it's like, yeah, I don't know. You have to find things that entertain you, right? Like, people are looking for entertainment, or they're looking for something that answers a question, right? So if I wanna say, what is Bitcoin? I can go on Google and type in something like that, and now I have a need for information. It could also be something that gives information or insight into a subject or a product, right? So essentially a need is anything that entertains, anything that answers a question, or anything that gives information about a product or service. So with all these different ways to write your content, uh, essentially you wanna find ways to write targeted content. So it resonates with someone, it creates an emotional response. Uh, that emotional response can be positive or negative. Uh, lots of news organizations use negative things where they say something that's terrible happening in the world and incites emotion in you and you click on it, right? And you wanna read it and find out what it's about. It could be something like 50 golden retriever puppies just got released from, you know, being from a cruelty uh, lab or something like that, and that creates emotion in you and it makes you want to read it. Um, it also engages them, so it, it speaks to that person where they are. So essentially saying, you know, if, if I'm looking for help as I'm, you know, just gotten a medical diagnosis, then I'm looking for something that's going to engage with me, right? Like that's going to resonate with me and going to give me information about this new phase of my life. Um, so Ident identifying how you do this and, and bring, bringing all three of these together is the best way to start writing your targeted content. So again, this is the content that sells products or services. How many of you actually run um, or are making money from your website or trying to make, maybe that's your goal? Okay, so if you wanna actually make money from your website, you have to actually start practicing these things, right? So you have to resonate with positive or, or negative emotions, um, provide information to people, and actually lead them on a path to make a purchase, or, um, or in, if you're running affiliate marketing or something like that, then you want to be able to clearly identify what product you're wanting people to purchase, right? So. Um, how do I know what to feed my audience, right? How do you figure out what your audience is looking for? There's a lot of different ways you can research these, um, but most people don't have the means to maybe, you know, pay for services that, that do that, like SEO trackers or things like that, but you can watch what your direct competition's doing. Find someone locally in your, in your city that is selling the same product or service as you are, figure out what they're doing and figure out what you like and what works for your audience as well. Um, you can also ask people, uh, surveys are a good way to do that. Um, engagement on social media. Instagram uh, stories allow you to ask questions to people. You can do polls on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you don't really have a following yet, you can even just send out an email. Start growing your subscriber list and then start asking them, hey, what are you looking for? What are you hoping to learn from this? You clearly have um, subscribed to my email list for a reason. So maybe that's because you have a question you want answered. Tell me what that question is so that I can serve you relevant content. You can also stay up to date on trends. So. 
It can be things like Instagram stories, like I just said, where everyone's doing that. Maybe that's how you can get snippets of your content or your product out there um, by just saying, hey, what, are, what is this problem that I'm solving for people and how can I write this in a way that they can digest it easily and not feel overwhelmed? Um, because overwhelmed readers generally don't want to make a purchase. So they don't, generally don't want to, to follow through on whatever your CTA is. Uh, CTA being a call to action. So that could be a buy now button, a, a sign up, subscribe now, things like that. Uh, so if they feel overwhelmed, they're immediately in intimidated and they're like, I need to do more research because I don't know what's happening. Um, so if you can erase that by by writing your content in a way that's um, easy to digest, that is in small, small snippets, it can help to ease some of that uh, user fear. Also get on social media. So claim your spot on the internet as quick as possible. If you are starting a business for the first time and you have a name, go find it on Instagram, go find it on Twitter. If possible, get them all the same handle. Um, so if it's, you know, at uh, Toilet Club, then you want to do at Toilet Club everywhere, if possible, um, just to give people an easy way to find you and recognize your brand and your name as well. Um, so what are the benefits that of actual, of good content, right? It can be building a relationship with your readers. Um, again, content is the best way to create a relationship. These people that you're selling to online don't know you as a person. Um, so the best way you can get to know them or allow them to get to know you is through relevant content. Um, SEO is a great way to do that. If you're not aware of what SEO is, um, it is search engine optimization, essentially meaning you go on Google, you type in toilets in Portland, and the first few results um, are generally companies who rank higher, right? So you want to rank as high as possible, assuming that people will not click through the first 15 pages to find your website. Um, we'll talk a little bit about ways to do that, just simply um, making small changes. Brand awareness. Nike has greater brand awareness. You see a check mark, you think Nike, even if it's not a Nike check mark. Um, that's something that they've they've established a long relationship, and people have now seen their their logo over time, and they have that brand awareness that all of us are, are striving for in our own businesses. Um, lead generation that is essentially your subscriber list on your blog or your website that says, "Hey, sign up for updates on what I'm doing." People sign up. That's a lead that you generated now that you can go and cultivate and and uh, grow that relationship relationship through emails that give them information, um, that give them small tools, webinars, things like that to grow their business. Your social media presence like we talked about um, and also like back, uh, backlinking strategy. Backlinking is essentially you have a website or somebody has a website and they write content and in that content they link to your website maybe. Um, so all of that from that can lead to higher SEO and brand authority and things like that. Um, so brand authority and thought leadership is where people say, hey, I want to know about cars. Now I know I want to go to CarMax, right? I, I know that they have um, identified themselves as thought leaders in purchasing a car. So those are a lot of different ways to do it. We're going to talk about a few of them. Um, so some quick SEO tips. So just make sure all of the pages on your website have a title tag and description. WordPress makes this super easy. We'll talk about that in just, in just a second. But adding a title tag to your images. So there's a lot of times when you probably go into a Google search, click on images, and you hover over an image, and the image title is 100-3.jpg, right? So Google doesn't know what that picture is of. No one else will know what that picture is of if they're only looking at that tag. Um, so titling your images is what they are, right? If it's a picture of Multnomah Falls, for example, you put no Multnomah Falls dot jpg whatever it is uh, so just finding a way to actually title your images title your um your blogs and and actually get people to under the internet to understand what you're talking about on your website uh, so use keywords that are popular in your industry and your web content and again this is one of those things where if you don't have a you know a, a paid service that goes and and uh, scrubs all of these websites to find this information you can easily do it yourself as well you can go and look at your tar your uh, computer competitors, direct competitors, say, what are they writing about? You can go and type in a search for what you want to rank for. And if that's, you know, buying toilet, I don't know why I'm talking about toilets. <laughs> I keep talking about toilets. It's the weirdest thing. It just popped in my head. Okay. <laughs> so if, if that's what you want to rank for, then type that in and see what other people are doing um, in your industry that are trying to sell those same keywords. So start putting those in your page uh, and post title. So 
if I'm saying I want to go to this uh, this bakery downtown, then or you went to this bakery downtown and you have a travel blog, um, you want to maybe say my trip to uh, Voodoo Donuts or whatever it is, and um, that will start ranking as well, right? That title tells Google what you're talking about on that page. Um, you write that in your keywords on your page, so as many, time, many times as possible without um, what's called keyword stuffing, is essentially Google says, hey, you're not really making sense in your content. You're saying too many of the same things that don't really flow together, um, and they will penalize you for stuff like that. So you want to make sure that it makes sense to say, hey, today I went to Voodoo Donuts, and they had this and this, and I really enjoyed my walk over to Voodoo Donuts because blah, blah, blah. This makes sense, right? It's a conversation conversational text is not voodoo donuts every other word knowing that makes no sense. Um, so those are just a few quick tips to do that. So WordPress actually has a great plugin. If you haven't had experience with plugins just yet, um, Yoast is something I would highly recommend for SEO. It is the highest ranked um, for SEO in WordPress plugins and it makes it really easy for you. So if I am writing a blog, I'll see something like this on my screen. Um, at the bottom of your, so actually you put in the content and then you scroll down and you'll see um, this analysis that's right here to the, to the left of your screen. And it'll tell you where you're doing well in your content and where you're not doing so well. So red is gonna mean, hey, this needs a lot of work. Um, your keyword density is not really high. So if you say my keyword is donuts and you only wrote donuts one time, it's saying you're not doing a good job of writing about your keyword that you're trying to focus on. Um, so then you go back and say, okay, I should maybe put this in a little, a few more times to make it make more sense and to let Google know that this is actually what my page is about. Um, it also will tell you if something is orange, that means that it could use a little bit more work, but it's not the worst thing that you've done. Um, and then green means you're all, you're good to go. It gives you a really good analysis on how you're doing um, with your SEO. And then over to the right, you can even see um, your URL, your title, like that's what you're naming your image or your media source that you're adding. So if that's an image or a video, it tells you, um, you can see easily like what you're actually writing is your alt text and your description. So the description meaning, hey, this video is about this thing. You wanna make sure that those things are actually aligned and accurate. Um, so backlinking is something like this where you're writing the content and this is the classic editor so if you're using Gutenberg um, this hasn't been updated just yet but essentially the same concept when you're in a block you write um, the content that you're writing about and then you highlight it and click on the insert edit link so you add a link and it now shows up as a link here that you can see live on your website so this is a way for you to say um, hey maybe I want to backlink to other blogs on my site so if I have a really cool blog about uh, something that ties into this one, I can say, hey, did you know about this? I actually wrote about it here and link to that other blog. So um, backlinking is really good for you uh, to write up to internal link to yourself as well as other companies that have site authority to backlink to your site, right? Because it tells Google, hey, this trusted site, trust this, trust this site. So um, it just helps with all of your SEO uh, goals. So um, some tips on how to become a thought leader, um, because that was one of the, the benefits of SE, or benefits of good content. Um, so say something new, interesting or different. Work with influencers that are in your niche. There's a ton of people on social media that are doing the same thing that you're probably doing. Just try to connect with them. If they're a little bit higher up on the totem pole, they've got a few more followers than you, say, hey, how can we work together, right? Send them a message or an email and say, um, you know, I'd love to, to write a blog for your site. I think that would do really well for your readers. And um, if, if you could just give me a backlink, that'd be great. I'd appreciate that. So there's a way that you can do that. Growing your social media following. It could be through ads or organically, meaning no paid ads. Um, essentially, just by posting content regularly, right? Get on a schedule and tell yourself, hey, I'm gonna post once a week, stick to that. Like, I try to tell people not to overwhelm themselves. Don't try to write five blogs a day um, if you can't keep it up. You wanna give your readers something that they can consistently count on. So if they say, hey, she always has Podcasts do this a lot, uh, where they post their podcast every Thursday or every Tuesday, and you know to expect that. Um, so try to do something actionable and, and something that you can achieve easily. Um, by blogging, by being industry specific, um, if you're 
having a donut shop, for example, there's a ton of donut shops, but something like Voodoo Donut, their niche is kind of like cool and weird type donuts, right? Like they have a lot of things on it you wouldn't think of. Um, so try to be as specific as possible on what you do. Um, this will also help with your SEO if other people are not super specific, right? So if you're gonna talk about mattresses or I don't know why I'm coming up with these weird, <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from. Um, but if you're, if you're talking about mattresses, maybe your mattress is cooling mattress and there's less rank, people that are talking about cooling mattresses. So focus on the things that make you different and try to really um, show those off, right? Like don't be shy, go on the internet and scream about yourself, you know? This is the best way for people to start getting to know you as a person and you as a brand. Um, so tell them your story. I am a sole believer in purpose-driven marketing. Um, purpose-driven marketing means that you are resonating with your audience by finding a common purpose. Um, you're defining your brand. Tom's does this really well. You buy a pair of shoes from Tom's, they give a pair of shoes to a child in some country that can't maybe get access to shoes. Um, so they've they've connected their purpose with what they're selling um, to make every to give everyone a pair of shoes, right? And so um, finding a way to, to get that emotional response and, and provide purpose to what you do, it, it really resonates with people a lot, especially in 2018. People want to find your story and they want to connect with it and they want to feel like you're connected to it and that you're actually doing something to benefit someone else um, or a greater purpose. So find a way, if you can, to do that. Um, and so this is, again, like defining your brand, be consistent in your messaging. If your vision or your, your mission statement is something, don't go off the handle about it. Like don't, don't write a lot about um, things that are not relevant to what you're talking about. Um, if you're a humanitarian, you can talk about a lot of different things, right, that affect people in general. But um, if you're very specific to something like camping, don't start writing about food blogging uh, at the same time. It's not consistent in your branding. People start getting confused and they're like, I don't really know that this person knows what they want to do. Um, and then they don't trust you. So you lose that, that relationship building opportunity. Um, so the result of that is brand loyalty. And that's what you would, I'd, I, that's what you want. That's what our, all of our goal is, is to say, I want this person to think of me every time they think of this thing. And that means they're going to consistently come back to you. You provide good service. You give them a product that you're proud of. And they consistently come back, right? You've given them a purpose that they connect with. They consistently come back. And that's the goal at the end of the day for all of us. Um, so if, you're if your content isn't driving conversation, you're doing it wrong. Another really good quote, uh, something that you try to think about, you know, as you're writing your content. Is it, what do what people say about this? Would it give them a positive, what, will they talk positively about it? Will they talk negatively about it? And if that's your goal, then that may be you know, what you're looking for, but just knowing what it is you're talking about. Um, so really quickly, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about headlines and subject lines. I'm not sure what all you came for, so I'm gonna try to get, make sure we get through all of it for you. Um, but clickable headlines, right? This is, can be, headline doesn't have to mean it's a blog, uh, doesn't have to mean it's, you know, a magazine cover, but if it is a blog, these things like uh, writing how-tos and name dropping and posing a question work really well in content uh, to get people to click on your content. Uh, how many of you are actual bloggers? Oh, okay, so this is actually probably good for you then. Okay, so um, writing a how-to headline basically says um, you're gonna be more successful if you're telling your audience how to do something they're interested in. So now you've identified who they are, you know what they're looking for, you know where to find them on the internet, now you're gonna give them the content that they're looking for. So if you're targeting graduating students, your headline could be 11 ways to uh, pay off your student loans, right? So now that they know this is what I'm gonna learn from this and this is what I need, you've given them a number Numbers work really well, by the way, for blogs. Um, five tips to do this, three things that you can start changing today, um, 11 ways to pay off student loan debt. That's, that also invokes an emotional response for most people um, in America because people have high student loans. Um, so essentially, the formula for that is how to plus the action plus the benefit of the solution. So if you say the 11 ways is uh, the how to, right? The action is to pay off your student loans and that benefit is paying off your student loans as well, right? So you've, you've built up this headline that they're more than likely going to click on because it's what they're looking for and you're giving them a solution to their problem of student loans. 
Um, so a name drop headline is, these are all names I've came up with, by the way. <laughs> name drop is not an actual, don't go Google it, it won't come up. Um, but essentially it's not uh, telling the reader what will be covered in the article, but the mention of a known entity. So it could be what Facebook is doing today that will change your business, right? So everybody knows Facebook and they say, hey, I use Facebook, maybe I should read this. Or, hey, I know this brand that you're talking about, it must be something interesting. Um, so that's, it's just one of those ways to get people to like, to say maybe this person knows what they're talking about, they're talking about something that's relevant to me. Um, and so this formula is really easy, important or well-known name, plus the benefit or solution. So in this one it was a, uh, Facebook 101, name drop, create your social media presence today. That's the how-to part, right? They're telling, you're telling them what they're gonna actually get from the, the content. Um, so then posing a question, is something that's thought provoking. It uh, makes them, it implies that they're going to, the reader is going to know that they're getting the answer in your content. So drowning in debt, we can help you, right? If you're running a financial uh, solutions uh, company, then you could say something like this, right? Like, or um, failing at your, um, failing at, you know, selling your product online, this is how you can do it now, right? And so it's posing a question that they will resonate with and then giving them an out to that, a solution to their problem. So again, easy formula. I try to follow formulas because they're easy to remember, but always the promise of a benefit or solution in every headline that you give. Um, if you leave it really vague, people will think that you're clickbaiting them, um, which is something that people do not like. They do not like fake news. Um, it happens often, but essentially this is an example of clickbait. You can see this on msn.com or cnn.com at the bottom. There's lots of things that say, hey, put this in your home and the rodents will run away. You click on it and it's like flat tummy tea. And you're like, no, not what I was looking for. <laughs> I was looking for the rodent killer. Um, so this is not a way to, to gain trust with your readers. Avoid it at all costs. No one will trust you if you do this one time even. I will never go back to your website if you do that, guaranteed. So. Um, now that we know a little bit about how to write headlines, I will highly suggest that even if you're just starting out, start a subscription based, um, or ask people to subscribe to your blog. Start an email list, right? You can do that through a lot of different plugins. Uh, WP Forms has one. Um, there's, a lot, oh, there's a ton of them. I'm not even gonna name them. But essentially, it pops up on someone's screen and says, hey, subscribe to get more information, right? And then you can start building out an email strategy, which is also a part of your content, um, that will give people this content. In case they're not going back to your website, you can re-engage them. Um, you can give them information. So writing email subject lines is also important because as as you know, a lot of times we get emails and we just hit delete. We don't open it, we won't read it, we won't click through it. Um, so writing headlines, I mean writing uh, your subject lines can be easy by following a few simple steps. Um, so just set a sense of urgency. If you're selling something, say hey, only one hour left to buy this thing. Um, give, them, give them some reason to believe that they have to do this now um, and people are more than likely to open it. Make them an offer. Say hey, this exclusive thing just for you. Um, call them by their name. So finding some way to like, to plug that into where they're called by their name, giving it personalization. Make it short and sweet. Don't send them a 14 page email. I can guarantee you they will close it at the first sentence when they scroll through and see how long it is. They won't actually read it. Um, and use, you segment your list, right? So if you have, uh, if you're selling multiple products, um, people who maybe come in and subscribe on a certain page, um, like if you're selling soaps and scrubs and things like that, People who are signing up on your soaps page, maybe create that as a list and then on your um, body wash or whatever list, create that differently so that they, you can segment them directly. Like, hey, I noticed that you like this product. I'm gonna send you an offer for another one like the one you bought. Um, and then make them feel important, right? Like, this is an exclusive thing for you. Only my readers get access to this. Um, it just, it, it gives people uh, that personalization that they're looking for. So here's a few just quick examples. Free marketing training for you. Just for you works really well as well. But um, hiring a writer, use this. You're giving them a solution. Let's reconnect, we haven't talked in a while. Maybe these are people who haven't purchased in over a year and you send them an email and say, hey, we haven't, re we haven't connected, let's talk again. Um, or grab this deal now, last day to save big. You probably see these from Old Navy a lot and a lot of different, um, brick and mortar uh, locations that are trying to get you to go and buy. You'll see this a ton next month, this month actually, it's November, um, for Black Friday. You'll get a ton of emails for Black Friday. Start looking at what they're doing. F go and subscribe to your competitors list and see what they're doing as well um, because it'll give you a good idea of maybe how you should be targeting or maybe it'll tell you what not to do. And either one of those are good learning experiences. Um, so quick ways to get started. 
set a plan of action. Um, so establish what your goals are, right? So what do I want to do this year This year coming up? Maybe I want to grow my email list. Maybe I want to get my, my uh, page subscribers up or my page viewers up. Um, and then figure out what your mission and vision is and, and what your KPI is. That's your key performance indicators, Essen essentially meaning what do, how do I know that I've achieved success, right? Like what ways do you know that you've achieved success? If that's 100 subscribers, that's your KPI. So you want to fight to reach that goal, whatever that may be. Um, identify your audience audience maybe it's personas maybe it's not personas um, but if you do use personas I would say as you're writing your content um, act like you're talking to that persona so if, if you're saying Jake is my persona they're the person that I'm trying to talk to um, and maybe I have multiple people I'm trying to talk to every time you write something say would Jake understand this would Jake you know appreciate this content would Jake resonate with this because in your mind you're constantly thinking about what they like what they do what they want um, and so thinking through that that way uh, create your content start actually doing it um, if it's a blog and you feel overwhelmed start with short it doesn't have to be 800 words the first time maybe it's 300 words maybe it's 500 just start something um, and then scream it from the rooftop tell talk about everything you're doing on social media if you're here today say hey I'm growing my business today it tells people you know that you're invested in what you're doing um, start getting online reviews start doing whatever you can to get uh, people to know what you're doing every day and that you're actually working on on your goals um, these are a few of the, the top like low cost or free even some of them um, tools you can use to get started with content some of these like buffer can be used to make um, you can make videos I mean pictures you can make images or whatever add it on there to your calendar it can automatically go out to your Twitter on a schedule your Instagram just to start getting some consistency um, I generally say spend a day creating all the content spend a day scheduling all the content right so sometimes our brains works in different ways and we say I can't sit down and do all of this today move on to the next thing like don't don't get caught up in that writer's block um, start saying okay if I can't figure out the whole blog today maybe I'll figure out an image that I can create about this blog that I can post online about it um, Snappa is an easy thing you can use to create um, graphics um, you can put different like images everywhere you can put different like little pop-ups all these types of things uh, promos for video sumo me works really well for um, getting people to subscribe it's a, a plugin you can use on um, or sumo actually is a plugin you can use on WordPress to get people to share on social media there's a ton of different ways you can can do these things grammarly is good for some people if you want help to make sure that you're making sense in your content and that it's actually clear and concise um, um, and it'll check for grammar, spelling, and punctuation. So a ton of things you can use. These are just some of them. Um, feel free to use those. Sorry that that went so fast, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions if you guys have any. Yes? Um, I actually de developed a website for many clients, mm -hmm. and I have issues with getting good content from them. Do you have any advice on how to, get, how to break it down for a client mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question was, um, she works with a lot of clients and they don't necessarily, it sounds like see the value maybe in it and they don't give you the things that you need to create the content and you want to know the tips. I think they're, I think they're stuck. Okay. I think they feel overwhelmed. Okay. The okay, they're overwhelmed and they, they're not really giving you the things you need to create content. Is that right? So I would say ask probing questions. Hey, what are you working on? Like, what are you doing? Like, can we talk about that? So if they say something like, oh, we're just working on this benefit that we have coming up, right? Then you say, oh, what's this benefit? Then you can go and create content about those things. They won't always know what's considered good content, right? And so that's your job to figure that out um, by asking questions and saying like, hey, this is what I have my schedule looking at. Like, I want to create content on this schedule. Um, what what things can we talk about that you're doing? What client are they work? Are they like an agency, like a marketing agency? Websites. All their websites. Not blogs, but website content, like about their companies. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they have an about us page with a mission and vision statement? Can you pull from that to get maybe some information about what they what they believe and what they do? Yeah, <laughs> they're starting from scratch. <laughs> um, there's a, let's let's talk about that a little bit um, after this, and you can. I'll be at the Blue Hills booth as well. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
I could answer you, I'd recommend. Mm -hmm. I recommend you find some writers and to, and add that into your into your cost of the website or have your client pay the writers directly to create content. You got to do that. Um, could you put it back one screen so we can see the there you go. Thank Please you. Sit. I really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other questions? I do have a question. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you get yourself to sit down and schedule to write your content? I mean, when we have so many other pressures and, and demands in our time, how do you say, okay, this is a day I'm going to do the writing the content? Okay, so I have a really weird process that I follow because our brains don't work the same way as a lot of people. If you're a writer, um, you can't just say, I'm going to write about this topic today and your brain will inevitably stop working and you will stare at the screen for hours. So what I do is I actually go and I do a brain dump um, and I literally say, these are all the things I could write about, right? Like these are all the topics that make sense and I'll make create the title for it. And then I'll go back another day and I'll add three points for each of those topics and then I'll go like another day I'll then say okay this is what I feel inspired to write right now right you have to have the inspiration to write otherwise you're wasting all of your time so I really would suggest um, brain dumping everything you need to write about and then just allowing yourself the flexibility to choose what makes sense for that day um, especially if you're running your own blog you can do that easily because it's whatever your schedule is right you're not working on a client schedule um, if you're working on a client schedule I would again suggest to go back at the beginning write the topics that they're looking for, and then giving yourself enough time to where if you're not feeling inspired to write tomorrow's blog, or next week's blog, start writing the one after that, and then come back to the one for next week tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like there, you just have to, to give yourself um, a little grace, if you will, and just say like, you know, today's not really that day, and be okay with it and move on. Just don't stare at the screen, you just waste time. Any, oh, there's, yes, sir. Yes, so the camp will actually post this video. Um, this, the links are available, I think, on their website later. Um, and I will tweet it out at Michelle Thomas on Twitter if it helps you as well. Yes, ma'am. Someone over here had a question. Yes, ma'am. There you are. Could you give me more tips on how to collaborate with Okay, so the question was, um, how do you collaborate with other bloggers or people in your area industry that do not allow guest posting? Um, so there's a lot of ways you can do that. It can be um, what's can, what's called like a byline, right? Like maybe you don't, maybe you start building that. I, so let me step back. Build a relationship with them, right? Say, hey, I love what you're doing. You're doing great work. Um, is there anything we can do to work together on? It may be a, it may, it may only be an Instagram post or a Twitter post. Maybe they won't allow guest blogging. Uh, most companies don't always allow guest blogging, but you can say something like, okay, what if I start writing for you and under your um, under their website, right? Like it's it's a, a ghostwriting opportunity. Maybe that's something you can do uh, to gain that trust of them to say, you know, hey, now I've been doing this for a while, would you mind if I did this other thing? Um, you could also try to en engage with them through like webinars or through um, like live videos or anything like that. You can say like, hey, I'd love to present with you on this thing, uh, this topic or this product that we sell. This I wouldn't say product because they probably wouldn't do it. But if you're trying to like get that that in, I would say something like that. Start liking their, start engaging with them on social media. Start liking their posts and sharing their posts. They'll start to notice you generally over time. And if nothing else, you can go back after some period of time and say, hey, I've been following you for a while. You may have seen that I've you know, liked and shared your things a lot. Um, are there any ways we can connect? I think most people would prefer you don't just say, I want to do this thing. Um, they want you to kind of give them the flexibility to choose what makes sense for them. Um, because otherwise, it seems like you're kind of encroaching on, on their business. But I would definitely just try to start building that relationship. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Body of content mm -hmm. in so many pervasive ways. Like, okay. for example, like any recipe blog, you have to like nowadays have to scroll all the way down to get the good stuff. 
I mean, if I'm writing a, I mean, if I'm writing a um, content for, let's say, an example, mm -hmm. um, toilet, you know, that's toilet company apartment, I feel like I don't want to have to sprinkle the expression toilet plumbing for a pile of poop so many times <laughs> in an article just to get the point across and just so that the SEO and you could yeah, yeah. lift it up. I mean, what are your thoughts? Is it, is it, some, is it the deal of the devil or is it something that so the question was, um, how do you start, he, he understands the title tags and meta descriptions and things like that. Um, he's asking how to best sprinkle that, those keywords into your actual content without seeming over the top, really. Without, without compromising your content. Okay, um, so some of these things, some topics are harder to write about. I mean, it's just gonna be the case, right? It's, it's hard to write certain keywords, um, but I think you can do that easily by adding a lot of video or pictures to your blog because you can have those keywords in those title tags as well. Um, you can name them that way. Um, I also would say try to figure out what someone is looking for when they're thinking about that. So you may think in your mind, I feel like I'm writing this word too much or I feel like I'm not really making sense, but think about all the ways they could, to, could look up something. He used my toilet example, um, by the way. And um, so in the toilet example, you may say best toilet companies in, in Portland, right? So you say the f five best ways to find the best toilet company in Portland, right? That's your title of your blog. And then in the blog you say, you may have been wondering how to find the best toilet comp company in Portland. Here are our tips to do that. When finding the best toilet company in Portland, you'd want to look for something like this or this and that, like toilet, 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 right? Like putting it in, in different ways that people would search for it. It could be, um, toilets are not always easy to find. Uh, toilet companies are, there's different ways you can write it. So think about how someone would search for it and then try to make, make that make sense, right? So they may search it in a lot of different ways. And like I said, video and images are a good way to get the keywords in there as well. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of different ways, but those are just top of mind. Yes, sir. The other thing is to be really aware of how many, uh, how many, how many times you're actually stuffing that keyword in there. Yeah. Go around it. Talk about yeah. Flashlight. Exactly. Talk yeah. About flush those are the things that actually mm -hmm. Google will reward you for. Yeah. When you're trying to get people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. The keyword stuffing is definitely something that Google will, will ding you for. Um, so that example was a little excessive about the toilet, but my, my point is is think about all the ways someone could search it. Like, you, like the gentleman was saying, what are the components of the toilet people are looking for, right? Finding different ways to write about it, um, answering the question, asking the question as like your H2, like your headline two in the blog, um, and then answering the question, right? So there's nothing wrong with writing the question and then answering the question. Um, um, Google doesn't think that's stuffing, but you definitely don't want to say, you know, literally the same phrase every paragraph, right? So there's ways to do it. Um, you can, you can, I, I would say read it and then make sure it sounds like a human wrote it and not a bot. All right, that's a good way to figure that out. Any other questions? Maybe one more? No? Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We might have time for two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, kind of, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I'm thinking along the lines of what somebody would be uh, typing into Google. Yeah, that's exactly what. Uh, so yeah. The question is, is when it doesn't make sense to put it in a phrase, mm -hmm. uh, like for example, if I was to type in best uh, Chinese restaurant, Portland, Oregon, uh -huh. you, you're not going to write in your text best Chinese, you know, you're going to write in Portland, Oregon. Or Google still recognizes that. Yeah. Yes. Google will still recognize. It's a bot, right? So at the end of the day, this is computers that we're using. They're not as smart as we are. They're, they don't have the logic that we have, or the, I guess, the context that we have. Um, so there are, Google will recognize best Chinese restaurants in Orland as, or Portland as best Chinese restaurant Portland, right? It still understands that those keywords are there, and, and they're still, you're, you're not going to struggle with that as much. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You mean a story as in like a book? Yeah, like short stories or something like that. 
well, that would be your description, right? Like your meta description would be, this is a science fiction story about this, right? Or, yeah, so that. Yeah, so there's different ways to do that. Um, this is probably something, um, we're at time, but this is probably something we can chat about later if you have time. I'll be around at the Blue Hills booth. Yeah. All right, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thank you.